I'm gonna show you how easy it is to load and unload 35 millimeter film camera. There's four steps for loading film and four steps for unloading the film. Once you do it once, you'll get the hang of it and it's actually quite easy. So maybe you picked up a film camera that looks like this or this or maybe something like this or this or from your dad's closet something that looks like this and you're interested in shooting film and it all seems a little intimidating maybe you've even bought some 35 millimeter film but you haven't just quite put it in the camera yet so hopefully this video gives you the strength and the courage to put in your first roll of film and to get shooting whether you're using like a little bit more of an advanced camera like this Nikon F100, or you just got one of these like half frame Kodak for the point and shoot cameras recently, it all is basically the same type of process, even though the bells and whistles are, you know, quite different on these two cameras. Uh, it's the same process and it uses the same type of film. And so like what is 35 millimeter film? You probably bought something like this in a canister like this at the store and it looks all pretty much something like this. It has like a little canister and it has a little floppy piece of film coming out of it. You don't need to be scared that this little part is coming out. That is part of the loading process. So what does 35 millimeter film mean? It was a little confusing to me when I was first getting into it because you have like, don't you have like a 35 millimeter lens and you have 35 millimeter camera? Like this is all very confusing. So there's three kind of main sizes of, of film out there. They all can have different brands and different ISOs. But when you're talking about 35 millimeter film, it's talking about the actual size of the film. So this is 35 millimeter film. The other two kind of categories are medium format and then large format. So this is what a medium format film looks like. It's actually in a kind of space looking thing. This is medium format film. It's also referred to as 120 film. And you can easily tell the difference because just because <laughs> easily tell the difference between just the size of them. So this is the most, these are the most two kind of common sizes of film, 35 millimeter and 120. And just to confuse you a little bit more, you might see like 135 film instead of 35 millimeter film. <laughs> Don't worry, that's the same thing. 135 and 35 is the same thing. So before I load this first roll of film, I want, I want you to be aware that there's also kind of two kind of big categories of uh, film cameras and that's one that uses an automatic advance and rewinding and the other one is kind of like full manual uh, and I'm gonna be showing you the difference between those two things okay so let's get into loading this camera I'm going to load this Ektar H35 camera there are four steps for loading and four steps for unloading the first step in loading the camera is finding where the opening latch for this kind of back door is for. And so they are typically right on the side of the camera right here. And all you do is flip that open and then boom, first step complete. The next step is mounting the actual little canister of film in your camera. And so regardless of whether you have this simple camera or this much more complex camera, this Nikon F100, it's all the same idea. Okay, so for this camera right here, you gotta push this little claspy thingy down and then you set your film in like that. And it's the same, it's the same way for a more complex camera like this. It just happens to be on the other side. So it has this little spool right here and I'm going to insert it right in there and set it in. So very simple, two very different cameras, same exact process for putting the film into the actual body. The third step is pulling out a little bit of this film so that it can be fully loaded into the camera and ready to take the first picture. You just pull out a little bit of this film it's always better to be on the cautious side. You don't wanna like yank out a whole bunch of this. Pull it across the body so it covers where the shutter will open and close. And then what you do is you attach it to the other side. So for this full manual camera, there is a little slot that you can see right here. And you actually take this little thinner strip of the film and set it in there. And then you can even wind it a few so it sits really nicely. This is probably kind of the most important aspect is that the film like sits flat 
and level in there so that when you close this door, nothing gets like caught or wrinkled or anything. And something that you wanna look for is these little advanced levers right here. So you want those to be like lined up with these holes. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just as long as it's lying flat and it's connected to this side. Now, for this camera, which is an automatic advanced, it does not have one of those slots. You just pull it the whole way across and you just make sure it's lined up with one of these pegs and you close the door. And the magic about this camera is that you see all these little things up here. This is what actually loads that film onto this little spool. So you don't have to slide it into that slot that this camera has. And now you've completed the most difficult step. Before you do the next step, I should have done this right away, but I forgot about it. You wanna make sure that this little spool on the bottom is all the way in. So I'm actually gonna open it one more time just to make sure that the film's sitting correctly. Beautiful, it's sitting correctly, it's in there. This is pushed all the way in to make sure that the, you know, the canister of film doesn't like go all crazy. The last step, number four, is just to close it. Just do the good old advance the film spool. And so you advance that once, you take a photo, do it a couple other times, and you keep going until at the top it says one. And once it's gotten to number one, you're ready to take photos. And so what that did was it advanced all the film that you pulled out at the beginning because once that film reaches light, it's no good, right? So it's already completely exposed. It's useless for taking photos. But once you close this lid and then you advance it, it pulls out fresh new film to go in front of your camera's shutter, ready to go. After you load a camera like this that's fully automatic, all you have to do is hit the shutter and it will automatically advance the film to the spot where it's perfect and it's ready to take a photo. So you have gone around, you've taken incredible photos and now you are done and you want to unload the camera and you want to get the beautiful photos back. So what do you do? Okay, there's four more steps to do this. The first thing is to, I know this is simple, but this is actually worth noting. Make sure that you're actually at the end of the roll. So if it says 36, it means you still have the 36th photo to take, so you have one more photo to take. Now, what happens if you take the 36th photo and you advance it and it actually keeps going? And then it says like, oh, I have 37 photos now, okay? Don't be alarmed or freaked out. Sometimes you can actually fit in a 37th photo to the strip of film. So there's not like magical, you know, like, photo one, photo two, photo three on this like strip of film. It's just simply a strip of film and you can fit as many kind of photos on there as you can. And some cameras actually enable you to like sneak in another, like an extra photo at the very end of the roll. So don't freak out, that's normal. Um, if you get to like 38, 39, 40, 41, your film probably hasn't loaded at all. That's depressing. Step number two is releasing the winder. That's what I'm gonna call it. Okay, so for this camera, there's a little button on the bottom of here and it's usually, the release is usually on the bottom. And what this does is releases this little one-way spool. So when you're taking photos, that spool only goes one way. It only pulls film out of that canister and then winds it up on this side. But what this does is it releases it so you can now take all that film and wind it back up into that, into that canister. So step number three is to wind the film back in. How you do it on this camera is that there is a little tab right here and this is a little winder. So what you're gonna do is now just wind your film back. And you can tell that it's winding the film back into the canister because there's some tension there. And you're gonna keep going, 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 going until you lose all the resistance and then it's just like kind of free in there. That tells you that the film has gone completely back into the winder and you're good to go. If you have an automatic camera and you get to the last photo, it's just gonna automatically go like and like reload automatically in the camera and you don't have to do anything. And the fourth step is just opening it up and taking it out and sending it to a lab, which is very simple. So you can take your film to a local camera shop that processes and scans film, and what they'll do is process the film for you and then scan it for you and then send you the images. So you'll actually have the digital copies of your film, um, and then depending on kind of what service they offer, they can actually give you back the negatives. So you'll also have the physical negatives of your photos. And that is how you load and unload a 35 millimeter film camera.